El Monte, one of the first white settlements in Southern California, once a bustling agriculture and trade hub located at the foot of the San Gabriel Mountains. Today, as one travels through El Monte, there is very little to remind you of the city's agricultural past, where Mexican-American migrant farm camps, segregation, and oppression once existed, and how a class of people were once looked down upon and told they would never amount to anything more than a field worker. This story is about Father John Cofield and how one man, standing by his convictions and beliefs, planted a seed of tolerance. Father John Cofield, warmly called Juanote, or Big John by his parishioners, began his 12-year tenure in El Monte in 1943. While only speaking Spanish for six months, the young priest was sent to the Guadalupe Chapel where a Spanish-speaking priest was requested to help local officials with gang violence. Father Juanote Cofield is often referred to as the hoodlum priest, who often intervened in barrio wars between pachucos, setting up boxing matches to settle scores, saying they were going to bury the hatchet once and for all, which they often did. At that time, all the barrios were created, would treat themselves like enemies. You couldn't go from here to Hicks, and Hicks couldn't go to Hayes, or to the Flores, and Cantaranas, or La Mision, or whatever. We were always in, in problems. And uh, that was his, his goal, Father Kufu, was to, was to get everybody together. And then he made me like a director of youth so that I could get all the, all the kids together and have, we created different, different kinds of sports like baseball tournaments and track and stuff like that. We didn't have anything. During his tenure, Juanote became known as a prominent advocate for Mexican-Americans, civil rights and social justice while fighting for better housing and public services. I used to tell my dad, how come you never bought a house, Dad? They never bought a house in El Monte. He said, because they wouldn't sell it to us. There was a, uh, I think it was a, a, a barber. His name was uh, Perez. I forget his first name, he was Perez. He changed his name to Perino, and they sold him a house. They sold him a house, he changed his name to Perino. And uh, he said, but they, they wouldn't sell it. They'll sell to Mexican surnames, Spanish surnames, people, they wouldn't sell houses. He was only, uh, the only person that would ever listen to us about anything, discrimination, abuse, and stuff like that from jobs and stuff. And we didn't, we didn't know any, who to go to. Many times you complained where you work, in workplace, and they ignore you completely. And we come to Father Cofield and say, well, I'm gonna go see him. And he did, he, he'd go back and talk to him. And, and you know, they give us a lot of encouragement. Juanote also worked with local schools and community colleges, helping to get minority students into college. Not staying in school was one of the very, one of the topics that he worked on for many, many years, because I didn't have an education, and uh, he knew that I, I couldn't read or write. So he said, you know what, we should go to school. And I went to night school, and I, I taught myself, but uh, he made it a point that other kids would stay in school. This is when, when he developed interest and tried to get the guys to stay in school because most of us would only go to the sixth grade, seventh grade and, and quit. We'd be going up north to the pig and fruit. Father Cofield also developed a reputation within the church as being a rebel, often chastising the church for its inactions and not speaking up for civil rights. This resulted in him being censored on several occasions and referred to the church as being in the category of, quote, saints that are difficult to know and impossible to live with. One situation cemented Father Cofield's reputation as being a rebel when he estranged himself from the church in 1964. Juanote confronted then leader of the Los Angeles Archdiocese, Cardinal James Francis McIntyre, when the church refused to speak out against the racially charged Proposition 14. What they were trying to do, the states, they were going to pass a law against the Spanish, Japanese, and blacks. They were promoting that, that, that was a slogan, to, to keep us from buying property. Well, Father Kofi went to the archdiocese to complain, and they said not to make many waves because there was money, a lot of money behind it. Some believe that Proposition 14 helped incite the Watts Riots of 1965 by increasing racial tensions in Southern California. 
After his scuffle with the church, Cardinal McIntyre demanded Father Cofield not openly discuss racial issues. In response, Father Cofield then went into a self-imposed exile and moved to Chicago. Some of the stories he told us when he arrived in Chicago, it's kind of uh, unbelievable that we could, that that could happen. He says people, that priests met him there and they put him almost in house arrest because they don't want to, to uh, face the uh, media. They kind of got him behind the, take him out of the airport so he wouldn't tell them why he was there. During that time, Father Cofield marched with Dr. Martin Luther King in Selma, Alabama, often using the song, We Shall Overcome, as the theme to his sermons. In 1968, he returned to California to help support farm labor leader Cesar Chavez in his efforts to bring dignity and justice to the migrant farm workers. And he says, we should get involved in that. Of course, at that time, it was new, and a lot of us were really afraid to get involved because because of uh, uh, the consequence that would happen in your jobs, you know, you, you were somebody else that was for, for that, uh, or against the, the, the strike, and they were against Cesar Chavez, and they would kind of uh, look down on us. But uh, Father Kofel always told us, says, you know what, if you don't talk, nobody's gonna listen to you. You gotta talk, you gotta let them know how you feel. Monsignor Cofield passed away on February 2nd, 2005, at the age of 91. Father John Juanote Cofield truly did help in planting the seeds of tolerance in a way very few have or ever will. Thank you.